I'll not go all the way at all. We'll hear the train coming from here and you'll make it down to the station in plenty of time. You won't go down and see me off then? Nah. We'd only be making a bit of a scene. All right, so? Did your mother give you money? She did. She gave me 30 pounds. What? That's more than the two cows made at the fair. Mind you, you'll need it all. Look. I'll give you another tenner just in case you'll be stuck. Ah, uh, no, Daddy. Even off. Take it, girl, just in case. You won't be able to afford to go to Mary Jacko's for a few pints at all now. Yeah, but maybe I'd be better off instead of listening to the same old yarns and lies. <laughs> uh, did your mother explain to you about the birds and the bees? What do you mean? Ah, uh, you you know the the facts of life. The facts of life. It's all right, Daddy. I've seen the bull and the stallion in action. I've seen foals, calves and bonhams being born and I think I figured it out by now. Oh, thanks be to God. You know, those young Englishmen you'll meet will only have one thing on their mind. And what might that be? Oh, look, remember the bull and the stallion and you'll be all right. Wasn't that a great American wake last night? Yeah, it was. The singing was mighty. Yeah, the neighbours and relations were great to come. They must be fond of you all the same. Hello, Mr. Hearn. Do you mind if I have a quick word with Mary? Her do so. Oh. Well, Mary, you're heading off. I am. What are you doing here? Asher, I was just passing. Come here to me. My friend Martin asked me to ask you a question. What's the question? Well, you know, Martin had a good time with your friend Margaret the other night at the pictures. Do you think she fancies him? Do you expect me to give away my friend's secrets? I know, it's just Martin is kind of shy and he'd like to know what his chances are. His chances for what? You know, going out with Margaret. <laughs> so Martin fancies Margaret, does he? I must tell her that. There's one thing sure anyway, Pisha Delay, you don't suffer from shyness. Would you prefer if I did? If I was shy and timid like a sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Which you wished. I enjoyed the other night at the pictures. Isn't Ingrid Bergman a fine woman all the same? And I thought you were looking at me. I was too. And the kiss was very nice. I suppose a goodbye kiss is out of the question. And my father only over there.
I hear the picture house in London are as big as five acre fields. I won't have much time for the pictures over there. Are you starting your new job next week? I am. Half past eight on Monday morning with Driscoll's the Builders. If I like the work, you never know. I might decide to go out to London after a few months. What? Yeah, should they say there's plenty of work building over there? Isn't most of the city destroyed? Bombed to smithereens by Hitler. If I do decide to go, would you go to the pictures with me over there? Ah, uh, sure. We'll see. I have one thing in common with Martin. I'm wondering where I stand too. I better go. My father's gonna be wondering where I am. Make sure it's right to me, won't you? I will. Oi, Mary. Good luck. seen a ghost. Nothing at all. Who was that young fella? Peter Delay. What were you talking about anyway? Nothing much, just the pictures and things. Pictures and things? Are you all right, Dad? Yeah, I'm fine, girl. Would yourself and Mum come visit me over in London? I don't know what about your mother, but I won't. Ah, uh, Daddy, why not? Well, I was across the water once at His Majesty's pleasure, and I swore I'd never again go back there as long as I lived. You were in jail, Dad! Oh, well, that was a long time ago. I never knew you were in jail, Dad. How'd you end up in there? If it was such a long time ago, what does it matter now if you tell me? Myself and your Uncle John were arrested and taken to prison in England and then Wales. What is that like? Oh, a rat-infested freezing hell. Four weeks I was in solitary confinement. Couldn't see the sky or the sun. And for a man like me who was used to open spaces, it was almost unbearable. What else, Dada? We were thrown into prison, young, innocent men came out hardened and determined to get the British out of this country for good. Well, hello, Tim and Mary, is it? That's right, Father. I was just over at Tobin's to make sure everything is ready for the station in the morning. Wouldn't that station mass be a great chance for you, Tim, to return to the flock? You could make a good confession, go to mass, receive Holy Communion. The trouble is, Father, I never left the flock. I was driven out and all because a good friend of yours, Bishop Coughlin, loved to show his authority by excommunicating IRA men like myself for doing our duty. Bishop, Coughlin did not take the decision to excommunicate IRA men lightly, Tim. He did it as a matter of principle. 
the principle of keeping the Ten Commandments, and in particular the Fifth, thou shalt not kill. Well, we fought the British for principles too, that man was created equal, and that all nations have a right to be free. This conversation is going nowhere. You're a hard man, Tim Ahern. Well, Mary, you looking forward to going to London? It'll be a great experience for you. Which hospital are you going to? St. John's Father. Well, as it so happens, I have a first cousin, Sister Philomena McCarthy, matron in that same hospital. Was she your cousin? I've heard a lot about her already. I'm sure Sister Philomena will keep you on the right track, and um, if you like, no, I'll say a mass for your intentions. God, that's very decent of you, Father. <clears throat> Mary, you better give Father Maguire a pound for saying the mass. Yeah, of course. Uh, here you are, Father. Thanks, Mary. You're very good. I'll be off now. <clears throat> God bless you both. Isn't that a good one? Everyone else gives your money going away, and then the priest comes along and takes it off you. Sister Philomene is a lighting bitch. She's known as a battle axe. The nurse is coming back on holidays, bring back all the stories about her. God, you can't beat breeding, can you? Daddy, why don't you go to Mass, really? It would make Mammy very happy if you did. Is that what she said? Look, I, I go on my own time. Father McCarthy is a nice man. I, him and me get on well. I'll go to him when the time comes. Mary, you know you don't have to go. I'll be fine. Don't worry about me at all. Goodbye, Dad. I'll write to you tomorrow when I get to London. Give Mummy a hug for me. I will, girl. Hurry up. And mind yourself. Goodbye, Daddy. It's hard to make sense of this life. Myself and the other lads fought for freedom. But though you are still going over to England, the home of the Black and Tans, cap in hand, looking for work, what was all the fighting for? I haven't had a good night's sleep in thirty years. I wake in the middle of the night in a bog of sweat, thinking I'm still in prison. Maybe I am. Sometimes I see the frightened face of a policeman I'm about to shoot. I'm going to take his life away. May God forgive me. Is it a kind of a curse that I'm here today watching my firstborn heading off to England? Maybe it's time I made my peace. <laughs> 